Good evening, welcome to CC Midweek. We are so happy to see you. If you are tuning in online, welcome in. Tonight we're gonna we're gonna dial things back a little bit and we're gonna be weaving some songs in and out of our service. And so just worship how you want to tonight. If, if you want to stay in your seat, just stay in your seat. If you want to stand, feel free to stand. Just worship however you feel called to, whatever feels comfortable for you. And we hope you enjoy the service. Welcome, everyone. We've had a nice couple of days. Anyone get a sneak peek of what spring allergies are like? Because I've uh, been enjoying that. Uh, for those of you online, say hi in the chat. Everyone here, just take a moment and say hi to a couple people around you.
For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him.
is everybody doing? I am so glad to be here. CC Midweek is my favorite service that we do. And it's because of you guys. I love it. I am going to be using a lot of Stephen Furtick's book tonight. My microphone sounds funny, yes? No, just me? Okay, I'll ignore it. <laughs> um, he has awesome ideas in here. And so I highly recommend this book. It just came out last week. It's called Do the New You. So some of the ideas I share tonight is gonna be from him and I wanna give him the credit he deserves. Judges 6, starting at verse one. The people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord gave them into the hand of the Midian for seven years. And the hand of Midian overpowered Israel, and because of Midian, the people of Israel made for themselves the dens that are in the mountains and the caves and the strongholds. For whenever the Israelites planted crops, the Midianites, the Amalekites, and the people of the east would come up against them. They would encamp against them and devour the produce of the land as far as Gaza. And they would leave no sustenance in Israel and no sheep or ox or donkey. For they would come up with their livestock in their tents and they would come like locusts in number. Both they and their camels could not be counted. So they laid waste to the lands as they came in. And Israel was brought very low because of Midian. And the people of Israel cried out for help. To the Lord. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe that inside each of us there is a story that we tell. I believe that we can let fear devour what you have planted. We can let fear lay waste to the potential that you've put inside of us. And so tonight I pray with all my heart and all my soul that you will meet us here that you will show us the story that you've written for us, Father, and not the story that we are writing for ourselves. Will you be our God tonight and show us your way? In your mighty son's name we pray, amen. Okay, I keep having these memories pop up in my mind, and the most ridiculous memory popped up in my mind. And so I'm gonna share it with you, but you're not allowed to judge me, deal? We are in the judge-free zone. This is the nest, church. We are in the nest, okay? I was in seventh grade. Picture a skinny, slicked-back Sarah, okay? And an eighth-grade boy liked me. Now, that was a big deal because he was older than I was. He had long hair. Do any of my 90s girls remember Jared Leto with the long hair, okay? the good looking locks but the problem was like we were seventh grade dating you know what I'm saying like you talk on the phone and you see each other at school but I didn't like him <laughs> and I knew I had to break up with him but I was afraid to hurt his feelings anyone got an amen in you okay I was afraid to hurt his feelings so I concocted a plan that was foolproof my sister and I have the exact same speaking voice. I mean, it sounds so similar. Sometimes I even get confused. I'll hear Katie on recording and I'll be like, what am I talking about? And so I thought Katie's my ride or die. She will do the hard stuff for me and I'll be a coward. So I asked my sister, tonight we are going to call this young eighth grade Jared Leto and we're going to let him down gently, okay? We're going to break up with him. And by we, I mean you. And she was in. She was in. So that night, we call him, and I'm sitting in the room. And Katie and I shared a bedroom, and I couldn't. I was ill. I was like, I got to get out of here. I was like, I'll be back when it's over. So I wait 10 minutes thinking, surely it's over. You know, what? how long can this take? And I remember opening my bedroom door, and Katie had a box with all these papers out around her of poems. And she was reading the poems to the boy that she was supposed to be breaking up with for me. And I come in and I look at her and I'm like, what are you doing? Katie did not break up with him. She made him fall more in love with me, okay? 
and the poems were all around. And I was saying to myself, how funny it is that we can do the things to avoid the things we're afraid of. Sometimes we'll hide, sometimes we'll put off, sometimes we'll shove down some of the things that fear can create. But if we're honest, all fear is not created equal. There's real fear. There is the fear of when my mom called me when she was having her stroke and I couldn't get to her fast enough. That was real fear. I remember being 23, we had just bought a house. I had two beautiful girls and I was pregnant with my son. I remember I had heard the call from God to, to go into ministry. And I took it so seriously, I quit my job and started volunteering more at the church because I knew God was gonna do something in my life through it. And Jake had graduated college and he had a good job and everything was good until it wasn't. One day he came home and with tears in his eyes, he looked at me and he said, I've been laid off. I had two kids, I was pregnant with one on the way, we had a mortgage, I had just quit my job to follow God. And the fear, it was so visceral, I can almost feel it when I think about it. It was like the fear of that gut punch, like you feel it. All fear is not created equal, but what happens is fear can shape the story of our life if we aren't careful. Fear can start to shape the story that we tell ourselves. I'm telling you, when I was 23 and he lost his job, there were a lot of things that I wanna tell myself, like, God, this isn't how it should be. I, I quit my job to follow you. There's a lot of stories that could have come up, and I think what happens to most of us is we let fear become a glass ceiling for us. And we think thoughts of like, oh, I'm not good enough, or I'm, I'm afraid to even try because I'm probably gonna fail anyways. Or I'm afraid of the hurt that could possibly come, so I'm not doing it. And instead of living in the potential that God has created for us, a limitless potential, we shrink our life to the ceiling of limitations. And I want to ask you tonight, what story do you tell yourself? Do you live in the story of fear? Preach it, Kenna. Preach it, girl. She's my biggest fan. I'm her biggest fan, so. Do we live in the story of our, our fear that says we're not good enough, we're never going to measure up, I'm going to fail? Do we, do we live in the fear that limits us? Or could God have an empowered life? that says you are loved, you are chosen. I created you on purpose for a purpose. And what happens is so many times I sit in my fear and my limitations instead of sitting in the love of Jesus Christ. What story do you tell yourself?
You take me just as I am. You choose me all over again. I am the one you love. I am the one you love. I don't have to choose anything. There's room at your table for me.
Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth at Ophrah. I heard once, if you don't know how to read the words of the Bible, like the names and stuff, you just say it with confidence. No one will know anyway, so that's what we're going to do. To Joash the Abyssalite. Come on, Abyssalite. Do you know what I'm saying? While his son Gideon was beating out wheat in the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. And an angel of the Lord appeared to him, and he said to him, The Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. And Gideon said to him, Please, sir, if the Lord is with us, then why? Why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his wonderful deeds that our father recounted to us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us, and he's given us into the hand of Midian. And the Lord turned to him and he said, Go, go in this might of yours and save Israel from the hand of Midian. Do not I send you. And he said to him, Please, Lord, how can I save Israel? Behold, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said to him, But I will be with you and you shall strike the Midianites as one man. The Midianites were ravaging Israel. Every time they would plant crops, it was, it was a nightmare because there were so many of them. We read earlier that it was like locusts coming in and just devouring it. And so the Israelites were laid at waste. There was like no hope. And they cried out to God and God shows up to a man named Gideon. Now, here's what I love. Gideon is threshing wheat. He's beating wheat in a wine press. That doesn't mean a lot to us because no one's threshing wheat and no one's pressing wine. But back in the day, you would only thresh wheat out in the open air. They would call it the threshing floor because you'd want the wind to help you. Because as you beat the wheat, the, the chafe would kind of rise and blow away and the wheat would be heavier and it would fall down. But Gideon is terrified. He's afraid. And so he's in a wine press, which would have been a hole kind of carved out in the rock. There would have been no wind circulation. And he's in this wine press beating out the, cha uh, the wheat because he was terrified. And when he was here hiding, this is when the angel of the Lord shows up. I love this image because I think sometimes we think you got to get it together before God will really help you. Sometimes we think we have to be strong and clean and good, but time and time and time again in Scripture, you are going to see a God who pursues you. You're going to see a God who shows up when life is messy, when fear has taken hold and it's shaped your thought life. And the angel of the Lord shows up and he says, The Lord is with you, mighty man of valor. He looks at Gideon and he doesn't see a coward. He doesn't see what his circumstances look like. He sees the story that God has written for Gideon, not the one that Gideon has written for himself. And he looks at him and he says, Oh, mighty man of valor church, sometimes we are, we're living in the story that we're writing for ourselves, but I think your heavenly father wants you to hear him calling to you. The Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. The Lord is with you, O mighty woman of valor. Your God is for you, and our fears, they can start taking root and shaping Look at what Gideon says. He says, oh, Lord, if you're with us, then why? Lord, if you're really good, then why does Midian have the power over us? Lord, if you're, if you're really with us, then where are your wonderful deeds? Because I can't see them anywhere. Sometimes we've been there. You do it long enough, you might come to a point where you ask yourself, Lord, if you're good, then why does it feel like this? 
I was with the staff yesterday and we were reading another book, Mind Shift, and we're talking about challenging our ceilings. Challenging what beliefs are shaping us. And we sat outside because it was 70 and beautiful and warm. And then I woke up this morning, it was warm, and now it's snowing. Only in Cleveland. But we sat there and we challenged each other and we said, what are your ceilings? What lies are you telling yourself that are limiting you to the potential that God has called for you? In his book, Fertig says, we argue more for our limitations than we would ever argue for our potential. Let me say it one more time. We argue more for our limitations. Oh, no, you don't get it. That's just how, that's just who I am. I'm just afraid. <laughs> no, 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 you don't, you don't get it. I'm insecure. <laughs> it's who I am. And we, it's like we fight to prove that we're less than. Instead of fighting to prove the potential that's in you. The potential that you're created for. The potential that God has empowered you with. And you see it here, Gideon looks and he says, who am I? I'm the least. I'm the least in my clan. I'm the least in my family. I'm the least. Gideon couldn't get past his circumstances. The angel of the Lord said, go. Go and save Israel. Go in your might. Go in the might that I've given you and save Israel because I am the one who's sending you. But Gideon's stuck. He's stuck in what his circumstances look like. And the fear has kept him hidden. The fear has kept his potential squashed. I find that there's two Sarahs. Sometimes I get this glimpse of this, this girl I want to be. It's like my best self. You know what I'm saying? Like I get this glimpse. In my mind, she's always a little happier a little less stressed out, always more courageous, but somehow she's always just over there. <laughs> she's always something I feel like I'm striving after. But what if this image of our best self is not just an image, but it's the story that God has written for? What if he's given us a glimpse of who we could be? A glimpse of who he's made us to be. So we gotta, we gotta challenge our ceilings. We gotta challenge our thought process. We gotta challenge our fear and our limitations and say, is this a ceiling that is my potential or is it my limits, my limitations? We gotta, we gotta challenge our thought and say, which Sarah is gonna show up today? Because I'll tell you, there's a lot of people who count on me, and if I tell myself the wrong story, I'm showing up in a way that is not helpful to anyone. I have a husband who I love. Just happened last night. He came to me, I got home from work, and he had something heavy to tell me. And I was a jerk. I showed up in the wrong form. It made me ill. Because I showed up as Mrs. Fix-It. You know what I'm saying? I got the solution to your problem. Let mama help you, okay? I had the solution. Instead of, my husband needed a gentle, safe place to land. A place to say, that is hard. I love you. Let's pray. Let's invite God into the situation. There's, there's two forms of us, and we can say, I'm going to sit in this fear, and I'm going to let it limit my life. Or I'm going to say, God has called me. The Lord is with me, mighty woman of valor. 
The Lord is with you, mighty man of valor. And if he is calling me to go, to make something better, to save something that I thought was broken or lost, then I want to have the heartbeat that says, send me. Bandaging the broken or washing filthy feet. Here I am, Lord, send me. If it's loving one another, even when we don't agree, here I am, Lord, send me. If I'm poor, if I'm wealthy, I'll serve you just the same. Here I am, Lord, send me on the mountain or the valley. I will choose to praise. Here I am, Lord, send me. If I'm known by how I love, let my life reflect how much I love you, I love you. And before you even ask, oh, my answer will be yes, cause I
Lord turned to him and he said, Go in this might of yours and save Israel from the hand of Midian. Do not, I send you. Gideon led with fear. It shaped him, shaped his thoughts. He said, if, if you, if the Lord's with me, if you're really with me, then why? If, if you're really with me, God, then where? And the angel of the Lord says, go in the might of yours and save Israel. Do not I send you. And then he says again, but I will be with you and you shall strike the Midianites as one man. Gideon led in fear and he said, if you're really God, then, then why? If you're really with me, then where? And the angel of the Lord flips the script. And he says, oh, no, 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 you have no doubts about it. I am the Lord, and I am with you. Therefore, go. We have to flip the script. It's not, if you're really God, then why? It's no, you are God. You are with me. So therefore, I will. The world needs good men and women who feel the call of God that say, I'm not going to question anymore. I'm going to stand in the truth and I'm flipping the script because I believe that you are with me. And because you are with me, I will go and I will love in a way that makes a difference. Because you are with me, I'm going to fight to save my relationship. I'm going to fight to save my marriage. Because you are with me, I'm going to go to work and add value. Because you are with me, I'm going to do the hard thing and I'm going to finish school and I'm going to follow the call that you've put on my life. It's time to flip the script. Because there is a beautiful script that has been flipped for all of us. Every single one of us knows the feeling of brokenness. I think we have the fear because we, somewhere deep down, know we don't really measure up. We've fallen short. And that leaves this discrepancy of how can a mighty, perfect God love a broken, messed up sinner? And that's where Jesus Christ came. And he flipped the script. And he said, no, no, no. You are loved. And I came for you. Once you were lost, but now I found you. Once you were broken, but now I've given my life for you. And he flipped the script for all of us. Church, when I was 23 years old, Jacob and I, we could have told ourselves a lot of stories. But the story we decided to say and tell ourselves on repeat was that God was good. That God must know something that we don't. And there must be a better job out there because he's faithful. And if he knows something I don't know, then I'm going to trust in him and I'm going to follow him heart and soul. And we told ourselves over and over, there's something better out there. God's got a plan. God's got a purpose. Maybe a job that makes more money. And we prayed and Jake made finding a job his job. And he's been with that company now. And he found a man who mentored him, who loved him, and helped bring him to the top with him. And God was faithful in it. What story will you tell? Flip the script. Trust in a God who is for you. Trust in a God who knows the eternal plan and can see something in you that you can't even see yourself. Trust him, heart and soul. Let's pray. Dearly Father, you are a mighty God. 
I don't want to flip the script, Father. I don't want to live in my brokenness and my fear and my insecurity. I want to live in the story that you are writing for me. I pray it for every single person who has hears and is listening or watching or whenever, wherever, Father. Will you show us and help us to believe that you have called us, that you are with us, that we are loved, that all the pieces that were broken that you made whole. For those who are struggling, Father, I pray that they feel your presence in a special way. Pray they can sit in your love, Father. And I pray the story we tell will be one of wonder, one of delight, one of faithfulness, because we have chosen to follow you, heart and soul. In your mighty son's name we pray. Amen.
I love some of the principles of AA. And one of the principles that they talk about a lot, if you've ever been in some of those rooms, is an addict often doesn't stop until the pain to continue is greater than the pain to stop. And what happens sometimes is people get so comfortable in that pain that it becomes incredibly difficult for an individual to remove themselves from it. And I think sometimes in life, our lives can model that, where we get really comfortable in the pain of what life throws at us, right? And allowing the circumstances around us to define our potential and our future. And there's some comfort in that. And I can say personally, I have been in these places in my life. Sarah mentioned one time 17 years ago when I was comfortable. But where I was at wasn't right for me. And I wasn't willing to make that change on my own. But every once in a while, God steps in and says, this is not where you're meant to be. And I will say that I could have just allowed those circumstances to define my future. I could have played the poor me card, but my wife wouldn't let me. <laughs> Thank God for her. And God wasn't calling me to that. And so we sat down and we prayed and I made getting a job my job. And for the last 17 years, God's led me on an incredible journey in my career. But guess what? I am more grateful to him today than I have ever been for my job. And it's only because of him that I've been able to accomplish some of the things that I have been able to. And I'm so grateful for him. And so I want to challenge you today, if, if you're feeling as though life's circumstances are um, keeping you from accomplishing something, I, I just challenge you, get down on your knees and ask God for the strength to move beyond it because he's got an incredible future for you. And he wants to walk beside you to see that future to its fullest potential. Let me leave you with a blessing. May the love of God the Father, the favor of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Have a great evening.